Welcome to the Mentor Podcast, where the most highly motivated entrepreneurs come to get their weekly dose of financial stability with host Ron LeGrand, as well as other nationally recognized thought leaders who will teach you how to get, grow, and protect your wealth. Well, hello, everybody. Back again with Ron LeGrand on another episode of the Mentor Podcast designed to help you make more money, make it faster, and keep more of it and retire wealthy. My special guest today is Rachel Prince on a very, very hot subject today called Airbnb or short-term rentals or whatever one chooses to call it. And by the end of this call, you'll know what uh, that means to you and how anybody can do it anywhere in the country and how much additional cash flow it can bring into your life. And honestly, you don't have to know anything about real estate to know how to do this, and you'll see that most of the work is done for you. Hi, Rachel. Welcome. Thanks so much, Ron. Pleasure to be here. And of course, uh, I love the name of your podcast, Mentor. You are, you, you are actually a mentor to many, so I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Let's start by, you know, I probably don't know anybody that knows more about Rachel than Rachel. That's true. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what, your background and how you got into this short-term rental stuff. Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. it, 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 um, this, the story that I love to tell is, I, is my down and out story of just being um, having health problems, coming off food stamps, just being, you know, I, I, I was raised very well. I had a good family, good upbringing, but sometimes, you know, when your health goes, just things don't go your way. And so I was renting a place in Denver. Rent is super expensive there. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with my career or where it was going. And I decided that I would either do Airbnb or Uber. Ended up doing uh, Airbnb because I had a Honda Element and the doors didn't work for Uber. They only two doors, they needed four. So ended up in the Airbnb pot. And then I ended up uh, renting out my room. Uh, I had a two bedroom and rented out my room one night. And it was the easiest money I ever made. And I never turned back from there. Started consulting mm. friends. Yep. And just and oh. uh, blew up from there. It's funny you mentioned Uber because I compare Airbnb to Uber quite a bit. And I just tell everybody that Airbnb is the Uber of the motel business. Absolutely. And when all is. you're doing is taking a hotel or motel room away from the hotel or motel, which is why they kind of don't like Airbnb. <laughs> Let somebody live in a furnished house instead of in a hotel, Yeah, uh, which is not a hard sale. Yeah, it's all true. All right. So, t yeah. so tell me what, let's, let's make sure everybody understands what is Airbnb and, and you know, why would we want to be even considering it? Well, you know, I thought the same thing myself, like, what is this Airbnb? And ultimately, I, I thought, why would people want to be renting out rooms in their houses or their entire home? But when I saw how easy it was to generate a cash flow, cash flow house or to generate income off of renting out a room or renting out unused space in your home, I thought, man, uh -huh. I, could, I could just develop an entire career out of it, which is what I did. I moved from Denver, uh -huh. five states over to Indianapolis, started a property management company in under a year, which hit six figures. Um, got my real estate license out in Indianapolis and created a niche within the market just for short-term rental properties because I saw the need. People in Indianapolis, for example, there's a lot of uh, boarded up houses or houses that need to be renovated. And so people are looking to invest here. Prices are good. There's a lot of inventory and they just don't necessarily want to rent out the house. They can get a better return by short-term renting at vacation rentals. Uh, this mm -hmm. their how their investments and so we're seeing you know a better return um, obviously it's getting more competitive legislation is cracking down so we so 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 some of us are having to evolve and work within the systems and the markets but ultimately we're still seeing really great results all right so in a nutshell in order to enter Airbnb, you actually have something to, have to have something to <laughs> rent out. Rent, so yeah. People can stay in it a night or two or three. I mean, However, yeah. From what I, what my experience is, you don't have to own that house. You could literally just have it under control with a lease as long as you have communication yes. going with the owner of the house and they know what you're doing. And of course, it's not legal everywhere either, is it, Rachel? No, and you're absolutely right. You don't necessarily have to own it, which is you know, which is why. Uh, some people get into it because they don't want to own, but the rest of us, we see the benefits. And I think you do too, because you're in real estate investing. Uh, of we, course. we see mm -hmm. the benefits of real estate investing your short-term rental because it's going to, your yeah. home can appreciate mm -hmm. over time. 
you own the asset. And so that's what really interests me is instead of mm -hmm. arbitrage or subletting, which you can do, but you, when you work it out yeah. with the landlord, but the, the, the asset control is really where it's at, I think. Yeah, well, you and I both know we want to buy them, but um, we got yeah. listeners on the phone that, um, you know, as soon as I say you got to buy a property, they turn it off because they don't understand what I do. And my whole world is buying houses without using your money or credit. And yeah. if you haven't been trained in that, then that doesn't put you out of the Airbnb business. So, you're, by the way, at the end of, end yeah. of this call, we're both going to give away something free. And that something is for for me is a, a whole training on um on what we do and why we do it uh, by and controlling houses. And I'm not talking about rehabs and junkers and all that stuff either. So I if I, uh, if I lease a house, then I can just uh, rent it out any way I want because I have total control of the house. And of course, if I'm mm -hmm. going to lease one, I might as well see if I can find a furnished one, <laughs> which would help. Right. So, well, here's the thing. You can lease it out. You can Ron, but here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Listen, I get it. I get arbitrage is hot. I get subletting is hot. I get that right now. And some people are going to resist, resist, resist. But the, mm -hmm. the, I think one of the reasons that we came together was because of my online course, which I just launched called buy BNB. And this course teaches people how to buy property, how to invest and how to set up an Airbnb. And it walks them through those steps because you and I both know it's not an overnight process just to get someone to buy a house to qualify, to get through all those loopholes. But there are secrets to doing it. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, you know we need to be preparing ahead of time if we want to buy. Sure, go lease, go sublet, go do arbitrage, build your your, yeah. your next down payment. But when it comes to the to the time to when you really have to put your money where your mouth is, you you want to become an investor. That's where the real return is. Right. So let's go through the process of Airbnb. Let's say we have some something to rent. Yes. All right. Now, um, what do you do to get ongoing tenants? Yeah, here, and that is the glory of this. I just was um, interviewing Joseph Michelli, who wrote a book, The Airbnb Way, and he's uh, he was he was working with uh, Ritz Carlton and Starbucks and Mercedes before we had um, he had gotten into you know the whole short term rental world, um, and he and I were talking about it, and we were just basically saying that um, the whole. The, the amazing aspect of Airbnb is that it's created a new type of entrepreneur. And I love this new type of entrepreneur, the rentalpreneur, if you will. Rentalpreneur is my website. And it's, it's so cool because Airbnb has opened up the funnel, right? So all we as the um, you know, the, the, the renters or the hosts of this world, all we need to do is put in our information on their app or whatever vacation rental platform you choose to use and click on and they, I'm not kidding you, send you the flow of clients. They just send you the guests. They, the money comes in as long as you have that place to rent. And it is unbelievable. You don't have to recreate the wheel. You don't have to do anything new here. You can just you know, upload your pictures, create your listing and click publish. And when you do, you've got millions of people coming in through that app who potentially could be your, your next guest. So the website does the renting and they do the collecting as well. Yeah, they're like a so third you party. So don't, you don't, mm -hmm. don't even have to have a merchant account. So no. what do they charge for that, give or take? No, yeah, they're like the middleman. They um, charge typically between, I think, 3 and 7% a nominal fee for the host and the mm -hmm. guest. I mean, it, it varies. I think mm -hmm. on the, the guest side, um, it can be, you know, depending on taxes and if that's implemented or not within a city, it'll be a different fee for the guests. Mm -hmm. Okay. Affordable. So all I got to do is get the place, get a description of it written up and get some pictures and get it on that site and then wait for people to contact me and book particular dates that they want. Now, yeah. of course, we've got to have furniture in this place before we go doing that. Yes. Uh, so how do you go about furnishing the one? I'm not sure you've got some way to do that. that yeah. Doesn't cost so a fortune. I have I have all different types of clients. Some clients just saved up and have a budget for that. And other clients are really on a tight budget. And I've been this way myself. I mean, it took me a year to furnish mm -hmm. my house before I could then start, you know, feeling like it was in a place where I could 
then move to my next house and start Airbnb this house. I mean, it, it costs a lot of money to furnish a house. We're talking thousands of dollars. However, you know, recently, I would say most recently, a lot of my clients that are on a budget will go to Facebook marketplace that has been the most successful for them because they find they can search all the furniture there. They can get it for a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, it's, it's mm -hmm. really affordable. Um, so I would say, you know, any of those types of marketplaces, yep. digital marketplaces are the best. And then yep. I'm a big proponent of thrifty shopping. I love Ross. You can get designer stuff for a fraction of the price as well. And I think that is, you've just got to be a bargain hunter and, and not be cheap and not try to look cheap. You've got to look, you've got to look savvy and people want that. Yeah. Or you got to buy a house and get the furniture with it, or at least it well, do the okay. same. Well, okay, so <laughs> you're right, Ron. That is that is how I do it for my other clients who are buying a house. We include the furniture in our in our mm -hmm. contract agreement, and a lot of the times we don't have to do as much on the on the back end because then we're we're right. already practically furnished. So yes, that is the tactic. Okay, so we got the place ready. We put it up on the site. Here comes the customers, and how far out in advance would you say would you would you normally book, Rachel? Listen, I've had clients who are two to three weeks, even months away from being ready or renovated. And we have added really basic pictures and we've just disclosed that like, hey, we're doing work on this or we're adding furniture. Um, we, will add, we will provide those pictures as soon as they're ready. But um, I've booked out months in advance. I've booked out weeks in advance. Um, right. The only thing okay. is if, if they own the real estate property, or if they, let's just say they don't own it yet and they're closing on yeah. it, they need to wait until they've closed to actually be the owner right. of the home to list it. Yeah. Okay. Unless they have landlord. And, all right. So tell me what kind of money is in this thing? How much more am I going to collect on the average with the vacation, with these, uh, with these short term rentals than I would if I just put a tenant in the house? Yeah. So, Give or take. And I know yeah. that's and, and it, obviously it changes all over the world. Uh, you know, the, 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 Typical short-term rental return, a lot of people are saying, is two to four times the amount of rent. You know, I'm seeing that shift and change a little bit as the market becomes more saturated and competitive with other Airbnbs. It also depends on what kind of town you're living in. I will say that when I lived in Denver and uh, cannabis became illegal, it was like everyone and their mother had to come out and stay in an Airbnb and, you know, partake. And so, and, and in addition to the housing crisis. So we had, uh, we were constantly booking at higher prices. Now you come out to Indianapolis and the market gets a little saturated. You're looking at, yeah. you know, one to two, 2%, one to two times the return. So for example, if let's just say your mortgage is $600 a month, you could probably make about $1,200. That's what I do in my own personal house. Um, $1,200 a month I make on a, on a slow month and on a, you know, a, a month during Gen Con or some huge conference. I mean, I made 2,500 in a month. So, so there you go. It's, it's a nice little, no, nice little chunk of change. So the more the city, the more attractor factor the city has yep. going on, they, obviously the more it's going to be rented, but we need to make a point here that we don't have to be in a vacation city to be in the Airbnb business. We yeah. just have to be in a city that people want to live or come to. And because yes. we are competing with a motel. I just did a podcast uh, people on People confuse that. that a lot. Yeah, yeah, I just did a podcast on that called, uh, you know, investing in non-vacation rental places. Because that's so true, Ron. Like, the the reality is that the cool thing about Airbnb and short-term rentals is that we don't have, it's not just vacation. That's why we say short-term renting because it's under 30 days. It can be in any area. It doesn't have to be by an attraction like a, an ocean or a major city. It can be, I've seen people do Airbnbs on the middle of nowhere, you know, where maybe there's a highway yeah. and that is, you know, or they're on their way to a, a main attraction and they just get a lot of, of traffic. Yeah, in the middle of nowhere might be good because they don't have yeah. any competition. <laughs> I <Yeah>. know, right? <laughs> right. Besides, what do you got to lose? If I got a place and I'm going to try to decide whether it's Airbnb or put a tenant in it, I can put it out on the website and find out what happens and always yes. rent it if I don't like the results. Huh? Love that. Yes, so, that's, a great, yeah. that's a great point. We got to get over the fact that uh, we, we can't second guess the market on where people want to uh, be uh, come to Airbnbs. Yeah. And obviously, if I'm in a vacation place like Vegas or got any number of them, um, uh, the attractor factor is more, but so is competition, I would guess. 
in I'm, my in, in my course, the, the buy BNB course, I do talk I'm, about prospecting. And one of the important things to do on prospecting is to actually be able to pull comparables. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. They call me and say, hey, what if I started this in downtown, you know, Noblesville out in the middle of, you know, outside of Indianapolis mm -hmm. Metro. And they have no idea how to find out if that would be viable. And so I walk them through that process. I'm gonna give you a little secret here. The way that you would do that is just go to airbnb.com or whatever vacation rental platform you want and just type mm -hmm. in the city that you're looking for and just pull in some arbitrary dates out in, you know, maybe two months out into the future, maybe a Monday and a Tuesday night and just search around and see like what is available in that area and, and then click on their calendar and see how much they're booked and see, you know, you see if you can reverse engineer what they're making a month. Yeah. And you'll see how many is in the area as well. Yeah, exactly. You'll see what the competition is and what they're doing. Yeah. I remember last time I went on Orlando and did that. There was over 5,000 Airbnbs there. I know, right? <laughs> on, the other, on the other hand, there's millions and millions of people going through there every, uh, every year. So it's all relative. I know. And, and so of course, the, the better the property, the more you're going to charge, the lower price to property, uh, the less you're going to charge and all yeah. of that. But um, from my perspective, what, it puts me in a little bit of a, a you know an awkward position because I'm sitting here and a client, a, a person says to me, you know, should I rent out and furnish, which is going to cost what you know, 20, 15, 18 grand to furnish their house in the middle of nowhere, and I, you know, I'm saying, do you want to take that risk? It's in the middle of winter, and I'm kind of, you know, there's a lot of of. There, there's not a lot of risk in the Airbnb game, but I would say that, you know, if you're going to be furnishing, that's probably the biggest risk. Well, money I, down. I, I, I can't imagine our listeners spending 18 grand furnishing it, but, yeah, um, yeah. you know, you know, we, we got goodwill stores pretty much everywhere. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, um, a misconception is um, that. I have to be there and I have to clean up after everybody leaves and I have to deal with all that nonsense and take calls in the middle of the night. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, it's a, yeah, it's a big part of the business. I think that's why I talk about this in my course. And when part of the, the module four, all about setting up and launching, you know, you, you may at some point when you, when you get to, to be in a place where you are, um, you know, feeling comfortable passing, you know, passing the baton from yourself doing all of the cleanings and the turnovers and the calls to someone else. You can easily for five, I've heard of people getting cleaners who do come in and, and take the cleaning fee, which is separate from your nightly fee. So you don't have to worry about that. It's your nightly fee. Let's mm -hmm. say it's 99 plus 50 for cleaning. So you that's set aside. So let's just say your cleaner comes in, you pay them 50 bucks. And I've heard of people doing easy 5% um, give their cleaner 5% of the entire um, income, the nightly rate, and they will help manage it. I've heard people, that's, that's just an easy yeah. way to do it. I personally, I, I teach people how to, I have an answering service after hours and they take all the calls so I can turn my phone off at night and get some sleep. But yeah. you know, there's lots yeah. of ways to do it. Well, I know for a fact that there are companies that will take those calls that you can hire yeah. very inexpensively. And there are companies that uh, do this for a living and, uh, we'll go in there and do the turnaround for you. Exactly. So you don't don't have to be in the city where the property is. There's other people who can take care of it as long as you yeah. got the boots on the ground and they can be hired cheaply. In fact, uh, they're not hard to find. Uh, yeah. Also, a lock on the door. <clears throat> Today, we use electronic locks. Do you? Absolutely. Smart locks are the way to go. The last thing you want is the lockbox freezing in the middle of the winter and your guest isn't able to get in late at night when you're asleep. And so we do use those smart locks. Absolutely. So that means you can literally change the code to get in from your cell phone on the app. Yeah. you can From change anywhere. It. Yeah. I mean, you have to be, you have the right the right door lock. Um, I like Schlage. It has a, a wink hub that it connects to and then you can just go ahead and remotely change that code. Um, yeah, you can lock people out or, um, yeah, just, it's very convenient <laughs> and it's okay. a good safety precaution. What's, do you, do you get a security deposit when you rent? Yeah, I think what you're asking is, you know, like Airbnb, the way that it's set up is you can add in a security deposit and this deposit will, it's kind of an imaginary thing. So the guest will put in, you know, they know what the security deposit is. Let's just say it's a hundred bucks. 
And then they don't actually pay that up front. It's only then after the fact, if there was a damaged item that you have to um, put in a resolution, mm -hmm. see, you know, and then Airbnb will mediate for you in order to get right. that deposit back. So you don't, you don't charge it up front, so you don't have to give it back. Exactly. It's easy for the, it makes yeah. it easier for the guests. And I've never had any issues with it. Airbnb's usually um, been pretty good at resolving those issues with my guests. All right. All right. Well, what about the legality of these in some places? You know, I know they're forbidden in some bergs within bergs. Yeah. What would you do to go find out if Airbnb is permitted wherever I'm thinking about putting one? I love that one too, because the module three about prospecting in my Airbnb course is all about, is it legal? You know, it's, it, we, that's kind of the first thing you need to know when you're prospecting and when you're trying to find this, this rental or, or house to buy, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that this is one of the most important questions, because if it's not legal, you're not going to be renting or you're going to get taken down. So the first thing to do is just to make sure you call your city or look at your county website and uh, find out where short-term rentals are legal or not. I always say, call the city, ask them, get it in writing. Because if you don't get it in writing and you speak to someone on the phone and then you do it and then they take you down, you have no recourse. So make sure that you have either a snapshot, screenshot from the website or you get someone mm -hmm. from the city to email you, it is legal, mm -hmm. here's, here's the deal. I was going to say, you can always go to Google and say, is Airbnb legal in blank city? Yeah, you can. <laughs> and, you know, there'll be forums yeah. and things like that. But I think the most, yeah. the best way to do it is to go to your county because they're obviously the legislators. And I, and I think course. that the, you know, making it legal or if you're, if your property is, is, if your city is heavily legislated, you've got to know, know all the ins and outs of it. What's the permitting fee? What are the taxing fees? Or does Airbnb... Mm -hmm. What Airbnb is doing in many cities, like they did in Indianapolis and Denver, is they actually take the taxes on behalf of the guest. The guest pays the taxes, and they remit those to the city, which is great because us owners, us hosts, don't have to do it. Uh, well, the same thing hotels have to do. So. Well, exactly, so, and that's the thing. and It's becoming yeah. more like the hotel industry. Yeah. So if I don't like the rules, I just get out of town and, and get them somewhere else. Hey, that's what I did. Have. I moved from Denver yeah. to Indianapolis where it's land of the free. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, is it reasonable to assume that somebody could build up a pretty substantial income pretty fast doing this? Yeah. I mean, I started a property management company that scaled and hit six figures under six months. And then within the year, you know, we were, we were rolling with over just 30 properties managing 30 properties. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can have one property and do just great. Give you the down payment to buy your next house. Mm -hmm. If you need one, or you can come to me and learn how to buy them without down payment. Whoa. Oh, there <laughs> you go. All right. All right, Rachel, I know you're going to give away something to our listeners. What would that be? Yeah. So I think, you know, I think the biggest hiccup here for people, the biggest, uh, um, investment is if they're not buying a house or even if they are buying is the actual furnishing of the home and what it costs. So I am including a PDF on everything you need to buy, everything you need to furnish your B and B for say like a two to four bedroom home. This will work great. You can kind of go through this checklist and make sure that it works for you. And it's the bare bones minimum stuff that you will need in your Airbnb, everything from a first aid kit and fire and fire extinguisher to the types of uh, platform beds, latex foam mattresses mm -hmm. that we use. Cool. Yeah. And uh, uh, so that report is free to them um, yeah. if they go mm -hmm. if they go to uh, do you have the site that's the yeah, mentor yeah, podcast uh, forward slash what by b and b by b and b b u y b n b b n b not b and is it b n b or b and b b as in n is in nancy so like bread and okay b n b whoever named these two I don't know. Whoever named these things anyway, where'd the breakfast part come from? I don't uh, know. You know. Well, some of us <laughs> yeah. still serve oatmeal, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, some people think you got to serve breakfast to have a, a, B and, a Airbnb. Oh, no. <laughs> well, okay. it's a good idea. All right. So uh, that's going to give them a report on what they need to stock the house with before they put it on the market. That's good. It's free. Yeah. Just go there. And if you want to learn how to buy these properties without using your money or credit, then you should download my book, which is free. In fact, you can get it uh, downloaded to read, or you can get it where I actually read it to you if you want to listen to it. 
And there's a uh, about an hour long training video on there on exactly how we do uh, this business in the pretty house business. We buy beautiful homes in beautiful neighborhoods. And it's not about buying junkers or foreclosures or raising capital or anything like that. So if all that interests you, and I hope it does, go to the uh, same website, the mentor podcast uh, dot com. Uh, I can't even remember the, uh, my own website, but anyway, if you go to the mentor podcast.com, you'll find my stuff yeah. uh, already right up there for you. And it's free. It's all free. Now, Rachel, I know that when they order your report on, on what to put in these houses that you're going to send them information on the course, sure. I would assume. Is that yeah, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Okay. All right. Is there any words of wisdom you'd like to impart on our listeners before we go? You know, I think I think the last thing I would like to leave with is that we are entrepreneurs. We are a new kind, a new brand of entrepreneurs in the short-term rental industry, and we are, as they say in the BNB world, um, as some of the Airbnb folks have said, as you know, we offer service with heart. And I think that it's important not only to have a passion for what we're doing here, serving people, having hosting guests. Uh, travelers from all over the world, but to, we have a responsibility to to um, to provide a good service, a quality service, and uphold our civic duties to our neighbors and other other people in the world to be good hosts. So you know, I think this is something where if you want to get into it, make sure you're passionate about it or that you have some level of interest. Because if not, I think it's going to become apparent to your guests, and I think you're you're you have the you risk falling apart at the seams with your business. So yeah. I that's what, yeah. I think it's an amazing business opportunity Thanks. for anyone that wants to not leave their home. Uh, and, and, uh, the only, the only hook is you got to have a place to rent, but even with Uber, you got to have something to drive. So yeah. uh, once you get past that hurdle, I mean, my goodness, the work is all done for you. There's nothing for you to do, but uh, handle a few uh, inquiries. In fact, you can even job that out if you want to. So, I want everybody to understand that this can be hands off if you decide to make it. I sir, some smart guy I know said the less I do, the more I make. And same thing applies to this business, which is why I like it so much. And uh, I, we didn't mention this, but the more bedrooms there are in the property, actually, the more it's going to rent for. Correct. Correct. And also, Ron, like you were saying, you don't necessarily have to own the asset. You can go make deals with your friends or their your friends' lands or your friends' RVs or strange places. And, and you know, you could just have a piece of land and have people come park their RV. So there's all different types of, of opportunities with yeah. this. Well, that's cool. Yeah. All right. Well, Rachel, um, I'm going to just give her that website one more time, thementorpodcast.com forward slash. By b and b by B U I B B Nancy B. Okay, B and B. All right. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to spend with us this afternoon. I know our listeners got a lot out of this, and maybe we can get them thinking about um, entering this business. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank all of you very much, and we'll see you on the next The Mentor Podcast. That's all for this edition of the Mentor Podcast. To connect with Ron and learn how you can attain financial freedom, as well as up-to-date strategies to grow and protect your wealth based on today's discussion, go to www.connectwiththementor.com.